Ever wonder when the perfect time to visit Disney is? Timing is a crucial element that can make or break your magical adventure. It can influence a variety of factors from crowd levels to wait times, weather conditions to special events, and even cost fluctuations. As someone who has visited Disney parks many, many times throughout the years, I've gained valuable insights into the intricate nuances of timing your visit and know how timing can truly enhance or detract from your Disney experience. Okay, can you imagine strolling through the park with manageable crowds, enjoying your favorite rides without the long queues, experiencing the Disney magic under perfect weather, and perhaps even stumbling upon a special event or festival. Not to mention potential savings you can make with a well-timed visit. Sound too good to be true, right? Well, it's not. With the right tips and insights, it can be your reality. Today, I'm going to go over the factors that influence the best times to visit Disney. But make sure you watch to the end because you won't want to miss out on the essential tips and hacks I'll be sharing to ensure your Disney experience is truly magical. To start out, let's identify the factors influencing the best time to visit. Crowds and weather are definitely two major factors that can make or break your Disney experience. First, let's talk about about crowds and wait times. Peak seasons like spring break, summer, and the holiday season, Disney parks seem teeming with excited visitors. While the energy and atmosphere during these times are infectious, they come with their own set of challenges. The surge in crowd numbers means longer waits for rides, packed restaurants, and an overall busier park. Whereas if you go to a Disney park in an off season, you are presented with an entirely different experience, a more relaxed Disney experience. Imagine walking through the parks with room to breathe, shorter lines at your favorite attractions, and the chance to truly soak in the magic of your visit at your own pace. These times typically fall when schools are in season such as mid-January and early March or late August through September. Now let's shift our focus to the weather, a crucial factor that can significantly influence your park experience. In Florida, the summer months bring in intense heat and humidity, often accompanied by sudden thunderstorms. These conditions can make outdoor activities less comfortable, and you may find yourself seeking refuge indoors or under a tree more frequently. On the other hand, California's Disneyland can experience chilly temperatures during the winter months, especially in the evenings and early morning. It's essential to come prepared with layers to stay comfortable throughout the day. The spring and fall seasons offer the most favorable conditions for outdoor attractions. With moderate temperatures and reduced chances of rain, these seasons provide ideal opportunities to explore the parks comfortably. You can enjoy more time outdoors without worrying about extreme heat or sudden downpours. So as you can see, picking the best times to visit Disney isn't just about choosing a date on the calendar, it's about considering the crowd levels you're comfortable with and the type of weather you enjoy. Some people love warm weather or even hot weather. I prefer prefer milder or to the chilly weather. We will talk more about the weather specifically in a bit. It's all about making strategic decisions to ensure your Disney experience is as magical as can be. But planning your best trip doesn't end there. Disney is known for its holiday decorations, its spectacular events and festivals that add a special touch to your visit. Every year, the parks transform for the holidays like Halloween and Christmas with themed decorations, parades, and fireworks. Special festivals such as the Food and Wine Festival or the Festival of Arts offer unique experiences that you won't find at any other time. But of course, with these seasonal events come larger crowds. The atmosphere is exciting, but the lines can be long. And while the holiday decorations are a sight to see, they do come with a higher price tag. So you need to decide if it is something you truly are looking for. If you're looking to experience these special events, be sure to plan accordingly but know that the pricing is higher during the holiday season. You may want to experience one of Disney's private after-hour parties. From late August to the end of October, they have the Halloween events. Then, as of November, they switch right over to Christmas and have the Christmas parties. These events cost extra, but the crowds are less and they can be a lot of fun. You can go on all the rides with no lines. If you do want to attend a Disney party, this is something that you would have to figure 
gear on the timing of your visit. Visiting the parks during off-peak times can mean fewer crowds and lower prices, but you might miss out on those exclusive parties. So it's a trade-off and depends on what you value most in your Disney adventure. While timing your visit with events can be fun, it's also important to consider your budget. And speaking of budget, let's talk about budget-friendly timing. I talked a bit about the peak season and the off-peak season for crowds. There is a peak season and off-peak season for Disney pricing as well. Visiting Disney doesn't have to break the bank if you plan strategically. One of the key components of budget-friendly timing involves understanding cost fluctuations. Prices can vary throughout the year with peak seasons typically carrying a higher price tag. On the flip side, off-peak seasons offer a more budget-friendly option with the added bonus of fewer crowds and shorter wait times. Now you may be wondering when these off-peak times are. Generally, they fall when the school is in season as the families tend to plan their visits around school vacations. So consider once again times like late January through early March or mid-September through mid-November. But it's not just about when you go, it's also about how to plan. Budget conscious planning strategies can include booking accommodations well in advance, opting for multi-day passes, and even packing your own snacks to save on food costs. I recently did a video on how to go to Disneyland for cheap. If you want to see a video dedicated to going to Disney for cheap, check this video out here. I will also link it below. Next up, let's explore Disney park strategies and help you decide which park is best for you. But before we delve into the differences between Disneyland and Disney World, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. I release new videos every week and you won't want to miss out on any of the magical content. Okay, which park is better? It depends what you're looking for. When looking at which park to go through, Disneyland or Disney World, each park has its own charm and factors to consider. Disneyland, nestled in the heart of Anaheim, California, is the original Magic Kingdom. It's the OG of parks. It's smaller, more intimate, and holds a classic charm that's hard to resist. Park hopping is really fast as you can just walk over to the other entrance and you're in the other park. However, its compact size also means denser crowds, especially during peak times. On the other hand, Disney World in Florida is a massive resort. It's almost a world in its own, with four theme parks, two water parks, and a array of other attractions. The extensive size can mean lower crowd density, but also more ground to cover. Park hopping takes time in Disney World. Weather is another key factor. California's Mediterranean climate makes Disneyland a year-round destination, while Florida's tropical climate can mean intense summer heat or sudden downpours of rain. So the timing of your visit and the possible weather situation is something Thing to take note of. Remember, each park has its own unique features and they are really two different experiences, but both with Disney charm. With that, consider these points when choosing which Disney resort you want to go to. From my personal experience, if I have three to four days, I would choose Disneyland. But for Disney World, I would spend at least four days or more. What about the element of surprise? All the Disney parks are packed with unexpected perks and hidden gems that can enhance your experience. While the thrill of the ride and the magic of favorite characters are given, what if I told you there's more to Disney than meets the eye? There's a certain charm in the element of surprise that Disney masterfully incorporates into the parks. For instance, did you know certain times of year bring unexpected perks? You can see Mulan during the Lunar New Year festivities or a host of evil villains during the Halloween season. Imagine being greeted by a rare character or finding a surprise pop-up event that wasn't on the schedule. The season you choose to visit the parks in can bring you seasonal surprises. And let's not forget the hidden gems. These are the little known secrets that can make your Disney trip truly magical. From secret menu items at park restaurants to hidden Mickeys scattered throughout the park. These surprises can add an extra layer of enchantment to your visit. Disney is known for having seasonal menus that are sure to delight your taste buds. Holiday treats to summer specialties. If you know about the Christmas cookie straw and love cookies, planning a trip 
in November or December is something you may want to consider. With that, they are all surprises, but food for thought on when you want to plan your trip. So remember to keep an open mind and eye out for these unexpected delights on your next Disney adventure. The differences between Disneyland and Disney World demand specific strategies with elements of surprise can add an extra sprinkle of magic to your trip. And now for the grand finale, my best of the best for planning your perfect time. As the perfect time can be different for everyone, I will end this by sharing some insider tips and hacks to maximize your Disney visit. Utilize crowd control calendars and refurbishment calendars to pinpoint optimal times to visit and keep track of when your favorite attractions will be closed for maintenance. You can check both Disneyland and Disney World and compare the dates and the rides that may be closed to make a more informed decision. Did you know that early mornings and late nights are prime times for hitting the most popular rides? With thinner crowds, you can maximize your experience in less time. It's all about embracing the rope drop strategy to conquer those queues. You can rope drop at all the parks. If you feel the need for a break during the day, familiarize yourself with the amenities offered by your accommodations in the surrounding area. Whether you're at Disneyland in Anaheim, which is a big city environment, or at Disney World with its expansive layout and additional attractions like golf courses and water parks, knowing your options for downtimes is key. Also, consider using single rider lines if you're okay with your group being split up. It's often a faster way to enjoy the attractions. Disney World only has four rides that offer single rider, whereas Disneyland has quite a few rides that offer the single rider option. Those are my top tips for planning the perfect time to go to Disneyland. If you want more tips and hacks that only Disney pros would know, check this video out here and hit that subscribe and notification to be notified when my next video drops.